This is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. Today, I'm going to be talking about why I don't stretch before my hockey games. And I'm going to be discussing dehydration following a long bachelorette weekend. And after that, we'll pop open a bottle and see what comes out. Are you ready? Oh, I'm ready. So, Bree, all right, what's going on? Sounds like a little dehydration is going on. It's not just a little, it's a lot of dehydration. <laughs> I felt like my body had alcohol poisoning after what a five day binge drinking, which I do not recommend for anyone. It is not healthy and is probably not good for any parts of your bodies whatsoever. Um, I felt like we left for Savannah, Georgia for my bachelorette weekend. And I felt like when we returned on Monday, um, legit, I was done. Yeah. My body did not want any more alcohol. Did you have like one of those two-day hangovers? Actually, no, I didn't. And, and I think it's because Monday night, I literally chugged water all day. And then I chugged water all day on Tuesday. And so by today, like I feel back to normal, like my skin has buoyancy again. And I don't feel like I'm all dried and stuff. But mm -hmm. like I had hangovers during the weekend. Mm -hmm. But then I would start drinking again. And then it went away. Which, like I said, I don't recommend that either. It's not the yeah. best medical advice. But it worked for me this weekend. You know what's a good little trick to rehydrate? Is put what? a little bit, put a little salt in your water. You know, I heard that too. So what we do, we have these things called liquid IV. Um, we ordered them. They are like amazing. Um, you can get them from Sam's, Costco. I think you can order them offline. But they're like little um, packets that you put in water in your water bottle, shake it up and you drink it. Mm -hmm. It brings you right back to life as well. Yeah. So it's not, it sounds like like an electrolyte replacement. Yeah. 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 I just ordered some packages called uh, Elements, like L-M-N-T. Uh, supposedly they're really good and they're great like re rehydrating you and uh, well really re-electrolyting yourself Cause that's the problem with uh, <clears throat> alcohol you pee out all of your electrolytes and uh, yes. you know sodium has got like this bad rep because the American diet has been for so many years processed food and, and sodium laden but now as we um, have gotten like better diets we almost have to put the salt back in a lot of people are actually you know uh, deficient in salt. Yes. It's super important for muscle contraction. Um, which, by the way, I need to give you a definition of what dehydration is. I just, for everyone, because sometimes I talk and I feel like everyone knows what I'm talking about. So I'm sorry about that. Okay. But um, so according to the Mayo Clinic, um, to define dehydration is it occurs when you lose more fluid than you take in and your body doesn't have enough water and other fluids to carry out its normal functions. If you don't replace the lost fluids, which is like that thing you called element or me liquid IV, you can get dehydrated. It says the most common cause of dehydration for young people or young children are severe diarrhea and vomiting. And then for like my age, you know, when you get a little bit older, um, it's the lack of water volume in your body. So that's like people that just don't drink anything all day long. You can get dehydrated that way or by, in my case, putting alcohol in your body, which is a diuretic and you just pee it all out and not replace the water volume that, you, that you're losing. So, and that could lead to other things, which is really not so good for you like confusion, dizziness, fatigue, dark colored urine, less urination and extreme thirst. Um, and those could lead to other things. One of the main things is like, like um, irritation with your heart muscles too, because you need water volume, all that for your muscles to pump everything through and your blood pressure. So um, being dehydrated is not the best thing for you. Um, it can cause a seizure to happen, just lots of, lots of other stuff. But like I said, I also drank water this weekend, so I was felt like I was kind of responsible with it. But it, it takes a toll on your body. Like I know, like I felt just extremely tired, and I just felt yucky and not the best that I could feel. 
during that time, but we were also having a lot of fun and I didn't want to stop. <laughs> so do you have any tips for our listeners for uh, the techniques to rehydrate or be a little better about it? Because so many people don't drink any water. I know, as you dehydrate. Um, so for me, even with my family members, I tell anyone, like, if you're drinking alcohol, for every two beers, glasses of wine, or even, like I say, I'm a vodka drinker, vodka, I drink one glass of water in between. And not just like a little glass, like I'm talking about like an eight to 16 ounce glass of water. Um, and then also, like I said, you can also, if you're not a big fan of just water, you can try the liquid IVs if you're drinking to help kind of replenish some of the, the electrolytes you lose. Or I had those little Mio things um, where water's not that good, squirt like a little squirt in there, mix it up, give it a little flavor to your water. And, you can suck those back or add in like fruit. I love to add like watermelon, strawberries, cucumbers, lemon, limes to my water because then that also helps flavor the water and it's a natural type of way of doing it. Uh -huh. One of the things I did, which made a dramatic uh, increase in my water intake was get like a uh, uh, Culligan. So I got like one of those like water coolers like in my garage and just having that there, like nice, cold, fresh water just inherently makes me drink a ton more water. That's a game yeah. changer for me. Some people forget, like when I'm at home on the weekends, I don't drink as much water as I do during the week while I'm working. Yeah. Because like in between patients, I'm like, oh, my mouth is dry from talking so much. So <laughs> <laughs> I need to go drink some water. Yeah. Some other things I do, I make, when I get up in the morning, I have two glasses right away before I do anything else. Oh, that's um, good. Because I can't do that. First thing yeah. I do is just want to go back to sleep, but that's neither here or there. And then I always have at least a glass with my uh, meals. Whenever I leave the house, I, I have a glass of water. So it's just like I've, I've built in. It's just like a habit, like brushing your teeth. You build it into your routine. Well, that's a good advice for those listeners out there, Chris. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm going to take it, but <laughs> <laughs> it's a good advice. <laughs> Here's another little fact. As we age, our ability, ability to sense thirst declines. So they say, you know, if you're thirsty, you're already dehydrated. Well, that ability to sense that declines. So that, that's uh, mm. kind of crazy. So for an older population, if you're thirsty, you're probably super dehydrated. Too late. It's yeah. too late for you. <laughs> <laughs> so Interesting. Good stuff. Okay. So, so what's uh, going on in the rehab corner? In the rehab corner, stretching uh, tends to be a hot topic. So I play hockey once a week. It's just like a little beer league hockey, we call it. Uh, and some of the guys in the team have noticed that I never stretch before the game. And so I get asked, why, why don't you stretch? Because usually you go to like an ice rink, you see people stretching, like as soon as they get in the ice, they do that little butterfly thing, stretch out the groin, they put one leg up on the board, stretch out the hamstrings. I never do that. Uh, and the simple answer is to avoid injury. That's why I don't do it. So I know that's, that might sound controversial because sort of the dogma has been stretched to prevent injury, but I, I don't see it that way at all. So the reason I th see it as like preventing injury by not stretching is you got to think of what stretching does, right? Stretching increases momentarily your range of motion, okay? And that's not always what you want because there's a principle in physical therapy, so once you've gained new range of motion, that new range is now an unstable range. You have to strengthen in that range of motion, right? So picture, you know, bending over to touch your toes. So for me, I can only get to like the middle of my shins. I got some tight hammies, right? Yes. If I work on it, work on it, I can get down lower and lower, and I can probably get to a point where I can touch my toes. But is that advantageous? Well, now that whole range from my shin to my toes is unstable range, right? So that's where injuries tend to occur at the end range. When you have a muscle that's fully extended and you're not controlled in that position, that's where strain occurs. So, I, I mean, I used to have recurrent groin strange, strains. That's a really common hockey injury. I used to stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, and it kept coming back and coming back. Well, then I became a physical therapist and learned these principles. And instead I started to strengthen the groin muscles and now the injury doesn't come, you know, never happens anymore. So that's what I got for you. Well, that 
makes some sense. Um, Cause I mean, you've always heard growing up, if it's tight, stretch it out, loosen it up, make it better. But I, I guess I can see that like if, so when I go for a run, I shouldn't stretch before, I should just stretch afterwards. I think so. So, I mean, so I think stretching has value, but it has to be done in a controlled environment, right? If you're trying to like say squat and your ankles are limited in the amount of dorsiflexion, you know, the, the sort of ankle motion you need to squat. Yeah. I think it's good to stretch it then because you're really working your form. It's controlled. That's very different from sport where you're not really thinking about, okay, what's my form like? You're, you're more goal oriented. So I, I think those types of range of motion issues should be solved in, you know, in a gym setting or any kind of control environment, maybe even practice depending on what you're working on, but not right before a sporting event. Uh, and before a run, it kind of depends on what you're trying to stretch. It's kind of a case by case scenario. Like, what do you, what are you stretching before you run? What do I stretch? First of all, I really don't run that often, which by sure. the way, tonight I am going to finally do what we were talking about last week with um, the mask and the O2 stat monitor. I just left it here and then mm -hmm. I went on the bachelorette trip. So I've been slack, but check out our Instagram page tonight because I will have it up there. But I guess I usually just do like the, um, the quad stretch. Um, mm -hmm. Pull my quads back, pull my quads back, take my arm over my head, just do what I do, what I see on TV, and then go. <laughs> yeah, and it's one of those things, like, if you're just kind of jogging, it's probably fine. But if you are, like, competing and sprinting, you know, uh, the, those end ranges kind of need to be protected. Like, So picture somebody playing soccer, right? They're kicking the ball, like, basically as hard as they can. And as the, the leg extends to kick the ball, the hamstring has a role in blocking that motion once it gets to its end range. Now, if you spend a whole bunch of time before the game stretching out the hamstring so that you have now more mobility and more ability to extend that leg, well, now you can kick it a little, uh, I don't want to say harder, but you can kick your leg further, right? Now you're straining the ACL. So some of the tightness at the end ranges are protective. So, again, that's like you got to stretch in a controlled environment and then strengthen that newly gained range of motion. I think that's a good enough reason for me. One less thing I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, you still have to do it. You just have to do it not before After. sporting events. After. Yeah. Well, again, this is my opinion. This is what I see. This is what I've experienced. Uh, I think we're going to find out in the future that that's the way to go, but you know, I'm biased. Anyways, on that note, are you ready to crack and put a bottle? I've been ready. <laughs> Let's do it. Okay, so what else is going on in the world of Brie? So because of the amount of alcohol I drank over this past week, I'm going to take it slow. And I'm going to do a high noon. Um, so have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard like White Claw, Truly, anything? High noon is pretty much the same thing except for it has vodka in it. So it's a great like summer drink for if you go to the beach, if you go on the boat, because you don't have to worry about carrying a bottle with you. So you come in a can, a couple of them, you're good to go. So this one I'm drinking right now is watermelon flavor. Um, it doesn't really taste too like sodaly or have an aftertaste, so that's why I enjoy these. So say like one of those little vodka sodas to go with things. Yes, yes. It tastes like cardboard. It does not <laughs> taste like cardboard, or I would not drink it because that's a waste of calories. <laughs> so I was actually doing a little research on calories and uh, sugars, and because I kind of had it in my mind that you know I had heard from a number of sources alcohol converts into sugar. Uh, and I guess that's not true. It's it, That just does not happen. And there's not that many sugars. I mean, it depends what you're drinking, obviously. You're drinking I say it depends on what you're drinking. Right. If you're drinking Malibu and pineapple, there's a ton of sugar in that. But if you drink a glass of wine, you, you've got the natural sugars that come with the grapes, but that's about it. Or that White Claw nonsense. <laughs> Probably has a little bit of sugar for flavor, but it's not that much. So I was like... Depending on what you're drinking is the amount of sugar. Like, I love red wine, but a glass is different than a whole bottle. 
And then I love, that's why I drink a lot of vodka because it doesn't have hardly any sugars in it at all. And it's perfect for when you're dieting. Well, yeah. So <clears throat> I think the issue is the sensation of a buzz, right? Because I mean, let's be honest, most people drink because they want to feel kind of happy and good, right? So for some people that develop a tolerance, maybe it takes three, four, or more glasses to kind of get the, that buzz that you want, whereas it might take, you know, one or two vodkas to get you there. So uh, a glass of red wine tends to hover around 125, sorry, 125 calories per glass. So what's that, 250, 500 calories for a bottle, whereas a vodka soda, like what you're drinking now, is probably 100 calories. And maybe it takes you two to 70 get 70 calories. 70, even better. So 140 calories is two of them. Probably has the same effect as the 500 calories uh, of the wine. I think the other issue too is it just inhibits your decision making. So you're just like, I'm a little tipsy. That burger looks amazing. Um, the issue is that's exactly what happens with me. But mine's not burgers. It's like French fries, pizza. Pizza. Ah, you know, pizza is a big one. I, you know, I think we were kind of talking about this earlier. You know, alcohol makes you kind of pee out all your electrolytes and you're craving something salty because you're salt deficient. Yeah. So what's saltier than pizza? <laughs> Maybe fries? I don't know. Fries. Fried fish? <laughs> Those are my faves. Throw some truffle oh, I mean, all food's my favorite, so I can't even just say that's my favorite. All foods are my favorite, so <laughs> I just like to eat anything that's not healthy. I don't crave broccoli when I'm drunk. Right. <laughs> Unless you put a whole bunch of like truffle salt on there. Yes, because I love truffle. Right. Me too. So uh, do we have any restaurants picked out? We talked about last week doing like a restaurant thing. Yep. So this week, um, I'm horrible at names, pronouncing names, but this is um, a restaurant inside of a hotel. Mm -hmm. It's off of Goodland near Fifth Avenue. It's, I think it's called Belisara, the hotel. Oh, the same restaurant is. Oh my God. You're picking the same restaurant I was going to talk about. Really? Right. The Claw Bar. It? I'm obsessed yes. with that place. Yeah. I went there for brunch. It was amazing. Um, that's where we usually go. Michael and I, we went for my birthday. So that's been almost a month ago now, but it is so good. They have a great brunch menu and for seafood is not really that expensive. So we got a half tower and I think it was like $65 for a half tower. And that included really big Gulf shrimp, um, oysters, crab, lobster, and then like something, I can't remember, something else. And for the two of us, it filled us up. That was enough food for us to eat. We didn't have appetizers. We didn't have anything after that. We had a couple glasses of rosé and we were good to go. Yeah, that's that's probably my wife and I's favorite place in town. Um, beautiful atmosphere, great service. It's a, a kind of a hidden gem. Yeah, it is. Like yeah. you don't see it advertised that often, but yeah. you go in, it's like a totally, totally like, I feel like a New York style vibe to the place. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like most restaurants in Naples. Yeah. And they have a jazz bar on top. I think it's called the London, I believe. Um, I had a peek at it. They let me go just, just look at it. It looks super cool. Uh, it's been closed because of the pandemic, but I can't wait for that to open back up and check it out. Oh yeah. I will totally go there for that. All right. Well, you, you picked my choice. So on the fly, I'm going to pick a different one. So the claw bar is awesome for dinner and awesome for brunch. So I'll go lunch. So probably my favorite lunch spot in town. Well, I got a number, but the first one that comes to mind is Martin Fierro. I love that spot. Argentina oh, Steakhouse. Yeah. yeah. I know you know it well too, right? They Like you walk in, you've got a, is a wood burning stove or charcoal? I don't know. They got a fire. As soon as you walk I in. I know when you walk in, it's delicious. hot as hell. Yeah, it, smell, it smells amazing, right? And they have some seriously good lunch specials. I mean, you can get a half a chicken, like, fire roasted. It's so tender and delicious for, like, seven or eight bucks, something like that. And amazing sides, too. So that's that's my choice. Martin Fierro. I love it. Well, I love it. their burgers are my favorite. I have not had their burgers yet. I've had their, their steak, their chimichurri sauce is amazing. Yeah, everything I've had there has been fantastic. How is their alcohol, their wine and stuff? <laughs> um, you know, I always go there for lunch, usually while working, so I never really, like, peruse the menu. 
Uh, I assume it's a whole bunch of Malbecs, you know, being Argentinian. Um, but I don't know. I really don't know. Every time I go there, I get the sangria just because I feel like I'm supposed to. <laughs> but I'm sure they have other great stuff. I need to branch yeah. out. But I also honestly can't. We I usually go there during lunch while I'm at work, so I don't drink while I'm there. But we did go there on a Friday because I get off around 12 for a happy hour. So their sangria, um, I have had their empanadas, the burger. They just, I mean, everything I've had there is good. Yeah, absolutely. They've got this app called, I think it's called Provencal. It's like uh, some sort of melted cheese with roasted garlic and peppers melted into the cheese. Oh, God, it's fantastic. So that's two really cool new places that people I think in Naples should try out. Um, especially for lunch, because it's like, and they don't take too long. If you call ahead, you can pick it up and they'll have it ready. If you have more time to kind of relax and sit, I think you need about a good hour. Um, but yeah, for the claw bar for brunch, uh -huh. definitely call and try to make a reservation. It's not as crowded right now because of COVID. Um, but I, I love reservations because you can just walk up and you know your table's ready automatically. Yeah, and now you can do the thing where you just go to Google Maps and make a reservation right in the map. It's awesome. Yep. Now, so let's, let's move on to the portion that it, everyone it seems to love. Oh, God. Because they're laughing at us. Oh, um, our common sense questions. Are these really common sense or more like trick questions or mind teasers? I feel like they're mind teasers. Because it makes you think, which is, I mean, everybody, I feel like everybody needs to think, you know? They make you feel stupid questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so this one, I don't even know the answer to, but here you go. What is the most common color of toilet paper in France? Is this a trick question? I mean... How could it be anything other than white? France is a different country. I know, but why would you take the time to like, just, you know, well, I like what, what color is paper naturally? Like a light brown, probably? I don't know. Uh, um, like, do, well, according is toilet to paper this, bleached? It's pink. I think our toilet paper is bleached because I bought some organic toilet paper one time and it was brown. So <laughs> okay, so that makes sense. You strip down a tree and you get some brown paper. So then, why do we bleach it? I guess you need to see results. <laughs> I, don't I don't know. That's nasty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next question. The average person does what thirteen times a day? Uh, pee. You think an yeah. average person pees thirteen times a day? Yeah, I, I guess so. it depends on if they're dehydrated or not. Uh, let's see, 13 times a day. Uh, I know it's not check your phone. Check your phone's like hundreds. Uh, let's see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go pee. It is laugh. That's it? 13 yeah. times? Yeah. Sad. You know, well, I guess a lot of people are sad in this world. Yeah, well, 13 times doesn't seem like... Well, I mean, are they count so are they counting chuckling, or is this like belly laughs? I mean, well, think about it. Most people that are at work, some of them are at home now, so they don't even socialize with other people. So unless they're watching TV, I mean, why would you laugh? You're just going through the motion, and then by the time you get off work, have a couple of drinks, then ah, yeah, you have a. I can see thirteen laughs. Let me ask you a question: If you're watching something funny by yourself, do you do laugh, laugh out loud? Of course I do, because I feel like nobody's going to judge me. So I just like <laughs> have the biggest belly laugh and be like, oh my gosh, that's so funny. I can't <laughs> wait to tell someone. And then I tell them and then they just look at me and they're like, oh, it's not that funny. And I'm like, oh, I thought it was, but oh well. <laughs> my, my college roommate, I'd be like kind of like trying to fall asleep and he'd be up watching comedy and he would just be sitting there by himself, laughing his ass off, like slapping the couch. Like, that is like, me. Would, would I do that if I was by myself? I don't know. <laughs> that is me. I start laughing. I'm like, oh my gosh. I talk to the TV. I'm that person. Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. 
All right, what, what See, else judgment, this one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so next question. And I'm praying I pronounce this right, because <laughs> y'all, well, as we said earlier, I have trouble pronouncing words sometimes. Um, Coprostastophobia. I probably okay. botched that to hell, but <laughs> it is C O P R A S T A S T A P H O B I A. Throw it in the chat. I, I can't visualize it. That was a lot of letters. C O. It's a lot. P R A S T A T, right? No, I said C O P. Mm -hmm. Are you typing it? Yep. C O P R A. So C O P R A S T A S T A P H O B I A. Oh, catastrophobia. Catastrophobia? Oh, no. C no, it's not. <laughs> I said, you got to get the C O P in there. Co Copra. Copra. Stas. S T S. All right. Stophobia. Okay. All right. So what, well, is, what it? is that the fear of? That's what we, that's the, that is the, I mean, if someone can pronounce that for me, that would be great. But what is that the fear of? Okay. So the first five letters are C O P R A, Copra. So I know in Portuguese, uh, Cobra is a uh, snake. So I'm guessing it's the fear of snakes. Constipation. Constipation. Fear of constipation. Yes. <laughs> the fear of constipation. So I have something exciting to announce. I have developed an app. How? How? What do you mean like what is it or like how did I do it? Well, what is it and how did you do it? All right, so it's a very simple idea. It's just a, um, a app for mobility exercises because I'm constantly giving my patients homework to do and I was sending them links to pictures and videos and this is just to make my life easier. So it's just a picture of a skeleton and you pick a joint and then it pulls up a list of uh, exercises that are for the joint. And it just links right to my, my YouTube uh, channel showing or demonstrating those uh, exercises. So the app is called Dynamic Mobility. It's free. It's in the uh, Google Play Store. And I think next week it'll be in uh, the App Store. So I'm super excited about it. Well, congratulations. Thank you. Uh, how did I do it? So there's a website called upwork.com, and you just post a job there, and it farms it out to anybody in the world. You know, you say, like, I want this done for 200 bucks, and it broadcasts the world, and you just find somebody, and they do. Like, it, it took me, like, two or three days to, to get developed. It's awesome. Well, that's not bad at all. No. That's pretty cool, Chris. Congratulations. I'm excited for you. Thank you. So I'll make sure to put a link in the show notes. Well, that's all I have for today, Chris. I'm going to finish these little few high noons that I have left and then head on to bed. All right. Let's wrap this sucker up. So this is DJ Dr. Chris. And it's your favorite nurse practitioner, Bree. This is Poppin' Bottles. Good night. Bye, guys.